Great. So uh, thanks again for joining us this evening um, as we launch this Coastal Flood Citizen Science Project with the City of South Portland. And we're really excited for this work because it's going to support um, South Portland as they prepare for a future with higher seas. Um, so sea levels are rising um, and storms are also increasing in intensity and frequency. And flooding is going to become a much bigger problem in the near future. So we need to be able to plan for it. And how do we plan for that? And what kind of information do we need? So um, in talking with municipalities, we've identified that uh, we need more local data. So we have over 4,000 miles of tidal coastline in Maine, yet we only have two tide gauges that have been collecting data for a long time, um, a handful of more that have been collecting data for a shorter time frame and a lot of unknowns um, because we have a lot of unique bathymetry and unique geographies along that 4,000 miles of coastline. And we also need to have engaged citizens. Um, planning for a future with higher seas for resiliency isn't going to be a decision that one person makes. We really need to have engaged communities to make sure that we're um, planning for a resilient future that's going to be equitable for everybody that lives in these communities. So, a solution to address those needs is citizen science. Um, so the Gulf Maine Research Institute worked initially with the city of Belfast to develop a coastal flood citizen science project. And with funding from the Jane's Trust Foundation, we've been able to expand that into some additional cities. And we're really excited to wel welcome um, South Portland aboard that project today. Um, so again, my name is Gail Bonus. I work with the Gulf of Maine Research Institute and joining me this evening is Abby from the University of Maine Orono and Lucy um, from the city of South Portland. So first I will turn things over to Abby and she'll share some information about citizen science and then I will give you a kind of a run through of how to use um, the website and upload data and participate and then Lucy is going to situate this project in the broader context of the work that South Portland is doing. All right, so Abby. Thanks, Gail. Hi there. Like Gail mentioned, my name is Abby Roach, and I was asked by Gail to talk a little bit about citizen science and its importance in building community capacities. Um, just as some quick background, I'm currently a PhD student at the University of Maine, where I study citizen science initiatives, specifically the impacts that such work has on Maine's communities and ways that um, it can make changes. So first and foremost, what is citizen science and why should the people of Maine care about it? Um, in citizen science, scientists are not working in isolation to decide what to study or how it should be studied. Instead, they're working hand in hand with citizens to build data footprints as well as avenues to build community collaboration in responses to and for change. Now, it's this hand-in-hand -hand aspect um, that I think is one of the most important types of this work, as it encourages individuals with different capacities and expertise to contribute to the capability of communities to adapt and thrive in changing climates. Now, I'm sure I don't need to tell you, and Gail just mentioned it as well, but there's an ever-mounting um, amount of evidence that extreme weather events are increasing in frequency and severity in our state as a consequence of climate change. And in the wake of all of this um, information is the challenge of building and sustaining um, scientific and social capacities of our state's mostly um, coastal and affected communities. So in other words, there's a need to be able to work together um, to be prepared and to take action in the face of these environmental risks. And to do so, we'll take specific place-based data and a collaborative uh, spirit between community members, community leaders, and scientific institutions. And this is where citizen science comes in, or again, that involvement um, in the scientific process by the public. Um, so in this way, it's research institutions like GMRI and everyday citizens forming partnerships and together collecting and reporting on data. Um, really the important thing that I'd like to highlight here is the togetherness, so the partnership component of citizen science and this idea that research institutions and municipalities collaborate to ask questions, collect data, and then put that data into action. Uh, and a wonderful example of this type of work is the collaborative work um, that's within this project that we're talking about today. So before I hand it back to Gail, um, I want to provide you all with some helpful resources. Um, I'll put these in the chat. Um, these resources are specific to Maine. Um, there's some book resources to learn more about citizen science, and then also some um, 
articles on citizen science initiatives in Maine um, and some of the things we've learned about citizen science um, along the way. So Gail, I'll hand it back to you and I'll put those um, resources in the chat. Great, thank you, Abby. So I'm just gonna pull up my screen to share here. All right, and you guys can see that good? Okay, super. All right, so I'm gonna run through some screenshots of this website. Um, you never know when something's not gonna work. So I figured uh, a live presentation might be too much. <laughs> so we'll do some screenshots, but if you wanna follow along, um, you can find the link for the website right here. It's investigate.gmri.org slash project slash coastal underscore flooding. And I'll share this again at the end. So this is the project page where you'll initially land on with that link. Um, it explains a little bit about why we're doing this work. Um, and it's because we are seeing sea levels rise and because we have that need for data and we also have that need for community engagement as we just under just explained. But in order to participate in this project, you are going to need to create an account. So in the upper right, you'll click the login button and get to a pretty simple create account page, username, password, your email address. And um, then once you have an account created, you'll be brought to the main site for the Ecosystem Investigation Network, which is the Gulf of Maine Research Institute's citizen science platform. So within this platform, we actually have uh, several different citizen science projects, which you're welcome to participate in. Um, all of these are monitoring uh, different species or ecosystems and what kind of change they may or may not be experiencing due to climate impacts. If you scroll down on this, you can see our coastal flooding citizen science project. When you click on that, you're back to the home page for this work. So if you scroll down on this page, you'll get to this uh, um, kind of navigation bar, which is key to getting around um, the website to the kind of the different sections of that. So it's right kind of in the middle of, um, of the page. You just need to scroll down and find that. And first is the project overview. And uh, the purpose of this page is to kind of situate the problem. Why are we doing this project? Why is it important? Um, and as we already discussed, we need that more local data to better understand those sea level rise impacts. And if you're curious as to kind of what those impacts might be in the future, you can click the here button um, or the interactive map to go look at different sea level rise scenarios um, across the main coastline, um, the different projections that we have. If you scroll down a little bit further onto the page, you'll be able to find the communities that are participating in this project. Um, you'll notice anywhere is not a community, but that is an invitation for anyone to upload data from anywhere that they are at. Um, participating communities have worked specifically with GMRI to determine um, uh, material that aligns with um, their goals, as well as to identify some coastal flood monitoring sites, which are going to um, kind of focus where people are uploading data. So on the right of the page, you'll see a little plus sign. If you click that, you'll get more information about South Portland. And this specifically situates this project in the broader context of the work that South Portland is doing. And in particular, looking at how we can achieve some of the goals as laid out in One Climate Future, the report that South Portland and Portland um, released, um, looking at what their climate goals are and how they may want to achieve them. All right, so if you go over to the prep and collect tab, uh, if you wanna know more about how to collect data and um, what is needed there, you'll get this information on this tab. So with this project, it's pretty easy material wise, you just need a smartphone. And if you don't have that, you can click on the data sheet links and it will take you to a PDF, which you can print out and take into the field with you and collect and done. Um, uh, pen, or pen, pen or paper and pencil, you can collect your information in the field and then upload it um, by hand to a computer when you get back home. You scroll down a little bit further on that site, you'll get to some more information that's specific on the flooding impacts that South Portland is seeing and some of the questions that they have around that just to guide your thinking as you're heading out into the field to collect some data. Really important, you'll also see a link here to the coastal flood monitoring sites that I've mentioned. When you click that link, it will take you through to this map 
um, we were including all of the different participating communities in this project and hopefully someday this will be filled across the screen and maybe even more. Um, so you'll click through to the South Portland tab um, and you'll see some images pop up here, but also note this is a pilot project and we're still looking to add more data. So perhaps you'll find one of your images that you share with us up on this page eventually. So if you zoom into South Portland, you can see more closely the coastal flood monitoring sites. And these are sites that the city is particularly interested in gathering more data from, whether they're looking to find what kind of flooding impacts um, is being are, are having on different infrastructure in the city or shared community spaces or perhaps ecosystems. Um, so these are areas where we are inviting you to contribute data, but again, you can contribute data from anywhere. So if you click on one of the blue flags or a photo to the left, you'll get some more information. Again, we're going to be adding to this site um, to provide some more details. So one of the coastal flood monitoring sites is Willard Beach in South Portland. And I was uh, there on February 4th of this year. And actually it was after a storm. I had met up with a coworker for a walk and hadn't even thought about perhaps what the tide might be that day, but I was so, so surprised to see how high the seaweed line was. Um, this is a beach that I frequent, um, especially with my pup, and the seaweed line was pushed up higher than I had seen it before. And that happens when waves or high tide are kind of pushing the floating seaweed up onto the beach. And then when the tide retreats, it's left. So this is showing us evidence of where the water was. So although it's not flooding in this picture, I know that it did in the last high tide or a few before then. So I wanted to upload some data about this event. So then I'm gonna click on the contribute tab and you're asked first to get some, share some details about your trip to the coast. So you'll see a map here, you zoom in by double clicking on the map um, to get to the location of where you're at. And then you'll grab the little kind of bubble up in the upper right and you can drop a pin on the map where you were. Or if you were scroll down beneath this map, you can also see where you can enter in longitude and latitude if you want to be more specific that way. Um, also, you'll need to enter in the date of your trip. So once you have that data in, we'll enter in some site specific data. So we really do want to know what time you were there. And we're going to be able to use this time to later associate your observation with the predicted high tide of the day and also the weather of the day. Um, because being able to understand how weather impacts the predicted high tide and then results in the flooding impacts we see is really the goal of this project. All right, so I was at a monitoring site um, in South Portland at Willard Beach. And uh, why I was there, I was just there for a walk. So just kind of checking out what the site looked like. I wasn't there for an um, to look at a particular high tide. Um, and did I see flooding? Yes. And have I seen flooding here before? Yes, I have. Um, kind of my job to go and look at flooding. So I've definitely hit up Willard Beach in the past. <laughs> All right, so here's some of the photos um, after the enter that information. Um, some of the photos that I took that day. If you're familiar with the area, I found this one rather astounding. You can see the seaweed is all the way up past where the playground is, like almost to the pavilion. Um, so it was a really high water day. I have never seen the water that high um, at Willard Beach before. So you do need to enter in two photos. You'll see the stars where those photos need to be entered. And photos three and photos four are optional. After that, we're also really interested in collecting data about your opinion, how you feel about this impact, how you think it's impacting your community and what your level of concern is. So we're asking questions about kind of, was this event like an inconvenience to you? So um, I could still get where I wanted to go. So that wasn't a problem. It did not flood my property, but yes, this is a place that I care about. Um, and did it impact me? It, uh, no, that one did not impact me personally. All right, and then we wanna know what was the nature of that flooding? So um, some of the other options here are, did it flood infrastructure? Did it flood something that's of cultural or historical significance? Um, was it public or private property? This one I selected environmental because it flooded a natural landscape. 
And then my level of concern for this, if this was happening frequently, yeah, I think it would be a big problem for the community. And then after you entered all your data, we just want to make sure that you have kind of double checked your work and you certify, yes, I'm entering true information to the best of my knowledge, click the yes button, click submit, and you will be brought to our um, data page. So you may notice this is photo, these are photos from Belfast and photos from May. So, hey, where did my data go? So this data page can be filtered in a few ways. It can be filtered by date, filtered by location, or kind of level of concern. So currently it's being filtered by date. Remember, I uploaded an observation to February. So you can backload observations, which I think is a really cool feature of this. So I just filtered it based off of where I was at. So South Portland at Willard Beach, and you can see my observation here. And if you click on the date link, you can see all of the information um, that I uploaded. So our municipal partners that we're working with are going to have access to the back end of this project where they're going to be able to um, download all of the data and really work with the data and be able to apply that to their decision making, which is really exciting. So that's um, kind of how to upload data. Again, it's a really simple process. Once you get in there, I think I uploaded that observation in about two minutes. Most of the hassle is getting my pictures from my phone to my computer, <laughs> but thanks to AirDrop, that's uh, pretty well taken care of for me. All right, so I'm going to pass things over to Lucy to share more about how this project situates in the city's broader goals. Thanks, Gail, and thanks, Abby, for your introduction as well. We're really excited to have this additional tool as one of many in our toolbox as we try to build the resilience of our community and our city moving forward um, to future climate risks, particularly those around coastal flooding, sea rise, and storm surge. I think what's really exciting about this tool is that it not only addresses gaps that we've already identified, but sets us up to move forward together as a community as we build our resilience. We went through a planning process a couple of years ago now looking at uh, the main flood resilience checklist to identify where we have gaps internally with regards to available data, collaboration across departments, existing plans. And one of the big areas where we really need to build out a better catalog is with our understanding and awareness of where flooding is happening around the city and what are the conditions under which we're seeing impacts from sea level rise and storm surge or storms that have already happened and what types of damage may be associated with those. So, to build out that data and identify patterns and trends in what we're seeing will be really impactful for our own city and municipal processes in developing policies and planning and programs that identify and target those areas of focus and where we may be most vulnerable to the impacts. Moving forward as we situate this all in one climate future, I think we're particularly excited that this directly starts to build the capacity of our community members to be partners in the work to build the resilience of our community, that this is something the city can't do alone and we should not do alone because it really um, gets at this need to improve the health and well-being of all community members and we can't do that without building knowledge and awareness. So I think we're particularly excited that this directly engages community members as partners in that work. Um, and through collaboration with community members so that together we can start planning and build our collective knowledge about our future, the, the vulnerabilities and hazards, and the concerns that residents have and can really work together in a, in a shared manner to address those. So we're excited how this tool can be used for, um, for policy and programming, for community engagement and recognizing that those aren't mutually exclusive, that they're best when they're brought together. So. We hope to continue to share it and leverage it and um, really keep your eyes out in the coming weeks around high water and, and new initiatives coming out from the city. And this is just one of those many tools to help us do so. So thanks, Gail. Great, thank you so much, Lucy. And thank you, Abby. And thanks um, to you for joining. Um, we really hope that you participate in this project and whether that's one observation or many, um, so pay attention to your local tide gauges, pay attention to the weather reports and share your flood observations um, or really any observations, any data is good data as so it's going to help us better understand um, our coastline and how the water is interacting kind of with the human and natural interface on land. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out. Um, and yeah, thank you so much.